Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord for the sounding of the shofar and thank the Lord for Minister Misty and our team and our beloved brethren that prayed this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for all our lives. Father, thank you for our brethren who had sacrificed their sleep year on, year on, and they've woken up early this morning and all of us sitting by your table to hear from you. Precious Redeemer, what can we ask, Lord? All we can say this morning is, Lord, fill our cup, Lord. We lift it up, Lord. Quench the thirsty soul, our thirsty soul with your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, compassionate Father, faithful one. Thank you. We give you praise. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We give Elohim praise for this morning and we believe the Lord will speak to us through his word. It's just two verses of the scriptures that words, words actually cannot describe what is in the heart to really give full description and understanding. But we're relying on the power of the Holy Spirit who quickened the dead, who, 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 who raised us from the dead. We believe that the Holy Spirit this morning will speak to every one of us. Let's go to Luke chapter 15, verse 14, 15, and 16. Very powerful word. And brethren, those, those of us listening this morning, we pray that once you listen to this, send it to as many as you can, to friends, to colleagues at work, to neighbors, to everyone that have not given their life to the Lord. Give them, send this message to them. A messenger on Facebook, if you know how to save it and put it into WhatsApp or whatever medium, send it, brethren. Men need to be saved. Their eyes need to be opened to the wiles of the enemy, to the devices and the wickedness of Satan. And I believe the Lord that as people know, they'll be delivered. Because most of the same people perish for lack of knowledge. But if they realize where the source of what they're doing comes from, they will opt out. They will ask for the, for the Lord to save them and to deliver them. Let's see this power of darkness in Luke chapter 15, verse 14, 15, and 16. Remember, we've been, do, we've been looking at the parable of the prodigal, the son that asked the father to give me what belongs to me and what happened. And the Bible says there, and when he had spent all, there arose a famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And when he had spent all, there arose a famine. Definitely a famine must surely come. But then everything has been spent. Satan is wicked. He wouldn't strike when things are okay. He wouldn't strike when he knows you still have something left. He will strike when nothing is left. So that you run to nowhere. You have no one to run to. You have no pillow to lean on. You have no wall to lean on. He makes sure that there's nothing. If he hits, you're going flat on the floor. So while he's still waiting, it may look like things are still going on. Is at that time the wicked, the Bible says, looks like the green bay tree is flourishing. But it will go in a second. That's Satan. My prayer is that our eyes will be opened. He's wicked. He knows when to strike. He, way, he knows when to bring calamity. He knows. It's not when friends are there. It's not when parents are still alive. It's not when work is still doing going well. It's not when brain is still functioning. It's not when everybody, neighbors are there to support. No, he strikes. He leads somebody to a lonely road. Once you enter that lonely road, he will tell you you're okay. You're a superstar you're a superman all these things he will show you look you can always get this it will come and he will take his time to speak to speak until he gets the one into that road 
He knows the road is very lonely. He knows that he has put tongues and prayers on that road. He knows that scorpions and the snakes and the pythons are on that road. He knows there is no water on that road. He knows it's a desert road. He knows, but he will take his time. He take his time to convince you. To he will take his time to rub your to rub your ego. He will take his time to elevate you softly. He will take his time to you know buffet you in every every way. If it takes time to give you names, he will. When we look back in the time of the Bible, those the Lord humbled in such a terrible way. When Nebuchadnezzar was humbled, he took his time because all Babylon was bowing to him, because he's taking the children of Israel to captivity, because all those, he did not realize that, look, it is only given to him. By the time the people exalted him and he exalted himself, then the enemy allowed him to go to that. What happened? He fell down flat very flat. What happened when Herod also, he made Herod think, I've got all the power. It belongs to me. He was making lofty words. And then he, he to the extent that Herod was happy to behead John the Baptist, a man that came from the Lord. He was happy to behead one that came straight from heaven. You know, that's the height of things. And when he saw that it pleased, when he saw just to please who? Herodias. Brethren, I want to open our eyes. I want the Lord to help us today to see what you are doing and you're taking pride in doing it. You're taking joy. Oh, don't preach to me. Don't tell me about Jesus. I don't do church. I don't do that. Or sometimes you feel your money or education or where you are. You the, the, It's so much and then the Bible is nothing. I just want this morning to open your eyes to know that Satan is very wicked extremely wicked nothing good comes from him and what happened is he allowed this young man to spend all at least if he had kept back a bottle of water he would have seen something to eat if i kept back maybe one pound worth of food or one pound dollar of food or whatever or had kept an extra bag to eat it would have been it would have been different but he allowed him to spend all Brethren, are you on your way to spending all? Please don't get there. Do not get there. Take a pause. Hold on. Wait a minute. Look back. You are going on a road. You will be very lonely. You are going on a road of destruction. You are going on. Are you there and you are being pumped up? Are you there? Please, in the name of Yeshua Jesus, stand and wait and think. And think, we said it yesterday, the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. Think, are you, you don't now have that money and you think you can drink and you can buy all sorts of drink? Think, because your liver is going to go off, it's going to get cirrhosed. The body, the, the Lord did not make any provision for the digestion of our alcohol so once it goes in it goes to the liver the liver will push it out and says no i don't have anything to store you or to metabolize you can you move it goes to the brain once it goes to the brain the brain will says hang on i can't keep you i can't keep you because you get me intoxicated you're only going to confuse me i can't keep you move it goes on it goes to the to the nose and the nose says what can i do i can you can only come out just your smell but not the actual elements and molecules in it it can only destroy and when people come to that point you could see a man that was a man of what that's got good job that's got good wealth that's got good influence in the society ordinary glass of drink reduce him to sleep by the roadside to sleep in the gutters of the cities to be picking things from the dump to be picking things and then in rag weighing on himself pooing on himself that even cold now he's getting to winter they don't even feel it in one minute in one second Brethren, can you see what Satan can do? He goes to any, any length. He goes to any, any, any length with us. This is what he will do when he finds out you are on your own. The Bible says there that when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. A mighty famine in the land. The famine, no one will be there again because the person had traveled far. 
to a very far country. So when the famine will ar ar arise, because the money was meant to squander, there is no farm, there is no relationship, there is no friends, there is no relatives, nothing. A farmer, there is a day of famine. And I want to tell everyone listening to me now, you have had it now. Don't get to that point. Do not get to the point of famine. It is terrible. There's nothing to eat. There's nothing. No water to drink. Even the comfort will not be there. The peace will not be there. The joy will not be there. The all the temporal things will fizzle out in a second. You will look for them and they will not be there. This is the work of Satan. This is what he does. The Bible says he had come to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's him big time. He had no, there's no good thing in him. Absolutely no good thing. Satan is jealous of you and I because the glory that he lost is now being given to mankind. Although he tried over the years and got as many as he could, but Jesus himself came in person and came and defeated him on the cross of Calvary. He came and then went to the pit of hell and took the key, the key that he kept the souls of men into captivity, gave, took it from him. And then when he was going, he said, all powers is given unto me. And that power that is given unto him, he released it to us. He released it that today you and I, who are ordinary sand and clay, only created in his image, can now bind this Satan and he will be bound. Bind demons and he will be bound. Cast them away. We can now resist him. We can now face him squarely. We can because of the blood of Jesus. He is not happy. He is not happy. He is a wicked man. Let's see what the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 23. Um, um, in the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 28. And when he was come to the other side into the country of the um, um, Gegesins, they had met him too possessed with devils coming out of the tomb, exceedingly fierce so that no man might pass by the way. That's Satan. That's Satan for you. Exceedingly, he took hold and men were living in the tomb. Men were living with the dead. Men were sleeping on burial grounds and they didn't know. In their mind, they thought they were sleeping in a, cool, in a cool bed. Even to eat, they were eating like the swines. This is what Satan does. He takes life out of human beings. He takes out, you know, sense out of human beings. He takes eyes, the right eyes to see out of human beings. What does it, instead of seeing rightly, people see wrongly. It's not, instead of looking out for glorious things, people want to see perverse things. People want to watch dirty things. Why would you sit down and all you love to watch is murder, thrillers going on through that. You watch ghosts. Brethren, can you see such wickedness? A man that should live in peace and righteousness. The only way he can gratify himself is to sit in front of a television and watch demons and satans and the horrible things. Brethren, what kind of bondage is that? Enough is enough. Today we're going to say, Satan, no way. I'm, you are not going to allow, I'm not going to allow you to keep me right here anymore. Human beings, all that is coming out of them is murder, 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 kill. You know, my brother Paul was telling me yesterday of someone that just came, pulled out knife and says, I feel like killing people. And not, then, you know, the next day, he police had to arrest him because he had a knife and was going about telling people, I miss it. Yes, in our own modern time, we say it's mental illness, but this is Satan for you. He went into man, took away their dignity, took away their sense, took away their humanity and went in to rob wickedness, wickedness. When the Lord was walking in the look in the book of Luke chapter 13 and verse 18, the, the 16, sorry, the Bible says there, and ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound lo these 18 years? When he saw the woman bound, bending, as so much that she couldn't, all the works of Satan, all devil, all wicked. All sorts of illnesses. Some people have had cancer for years and is running water and bleeding, pain in anguish. Satan, wickedness, wickedness. 
Some people have not seen their relatives for years and years. Or oh, everyone gone. They don't even know where people are. They don't even know where some people, you know, met uh, some years ago. Says, I'm the only one. I don't know. I'm the only one. I don't know. Parents dead. Mom and dad dead. I don't think I have any uncle. I don't think I have any, any, anybody. I don't even know where I came from. I said, you mean you don't know where you came from? He says, yes, I don't know where I came from. I don't know who my dad is. And my mom died when I'm young. So I don't have anyone. And he said to me, as you're looking at me, I'm just by myself here on this earth. Brother, these are just little things we can talk about. And I know you are there listening. I say, Pastor Grace, you've not mentioned mine. But look at this daughter of Abraham, bound by enemy for 18 years. And Jesus said to her, be loosed from this bond. Be loosed. Be loosed. Today you will be loosed. Today you will be loosed. Are you in adultery and fornication? It's a spirit. It's a spirit that has taken away your serenity, that has taken away your chastity, and then put inside of man the spirit, wicked spirit of dog, because it's dog that does such things. But why can't you stand and say, I'm a human being. I'm not going to... Take on this spirit that he, unless I lie around with all sorts of men and don't care about my dignity and about the diseases, how can I do that? Some people are in lies, everything about them. Their good morning is lies, good night is lies, everything like it is Satan. And sometimes they feel so bad. They will tell lies and they come, oh, I've done it again. Why? This is the enemy taking out. Some people, barbarian, that in this modern time, people are still eating human beings. That some cultures, people, will, somebody will die. Their friends will come and then dissect the brain and took the brain to eat and roast so that they can live longer or whatever is their reason. And then they keep them and bound them so that they'll be taking the... the the flesh once and then roasting that is it what of someone who had been all they are thinking is wickedness wickedness how to pull people down destroy them in their workplaces someone there as a manager everything going on in your brain is how to destroy this person how to give them query how to make life miserable when they come in you look at time when they sit down you come to look at them all you are doing is perpetually torment people get under you because there is no peace because anyone who is tormented will torment others when people are tormented they will torment others and then you look at the brethren this is what satan has done what did he do to job in the book of job chapter one he went to the lord and says oh you've given job all these things and you've got you, you you are all around him you've protected him oh look at what is i tell you if you take these things away from job he will curse you he will curse but the lord said to him you can't i know my servant job you can go and try but his spirit his soul it is not given to you to to, to touch and what did the enemy came he came like a hurricane a hurricane in one day in one day he sent fire from top they thought it's fire from heaven no he cannot come it's from satan i wonder what you're going through now and you think oh the lord is but no he's coming from satan the lord is not punishing you not at all he released fire and it consumed all the oxen he and the men looking after them he left one to come and tell job before you know it he consumed all the sheep Everything and all the houses destroyed. He left one to come and tell Job. But adventure, Job will, will collapse and die. Before you know it, he went again. And the final one, every daughter and son of his died under. And it looks like an earthquake and the house fell. Everyone in one go. And Job will rent his, his clothes. I don't know who here you are renting your clothes you say to me oh for the past two years oh things terrible has been happening mom have died after mom uncle after uncle i lost my job after job child died after child died oh like this happened the the house went on fire after that oh i was duped and everything i had on the bank disappeared and after that these have you have that story this is demon for you this is satan for you so why will anybody obey him why will anybody respond to him why will anybody still remain under his influence this is him big time for you 
For here on earth, because he's everywhere, walking to and fro, nothing good comes out from him. That's why Jesus said to us, he had come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But let's continue in that place. And in verse 15, and he went and joined himself to a certain citizen of the country, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. How wicked Satan is. He was there, he had all, but immediately he ran out of everything he had. He went to someone and said, please, can I work for you? They looked at him head to toe and sent him straight to feed the swine. I want to tell you, that's how Satan will disappoint you. Satan will definitely disappoint you. Have you not done things with people? And when trouble come out of it, they deny you. Satan will deny you big time. When people go to do things, they say, oh, Satan led me to do it. Satan will tell you, did you see me? You didn't see me. Did I take your hand to go and do the murder? No, I didn't. Did I force your mouth open to speak all the foul and lewd languages you're doing? No, I didn't. He didn't. You said you didn't. But just he suggested and men obeyed. That's him. He will deny you big time. He will accuse you big time. When we look at you know, the, the, the high priest Joshua, when he stood before the Lord, it was Satan that says, Lord, would you want to keep this one? Can you look at his cloth? It is dirty. Is this same Satan will tell you, oh, that death, that death doesn't really matter. Go just beat it off. He was the one that would say, oh, nobody can see it. He was the one that would tell you, oh, come on. You've worn clean clothes all your life. So this little one, who, who, who is going to say it? To it, it doesn't really matter. He's a one of sin. He's a one of sin, but he's waiting for you to really do that sin. And immediately he will send you to feed the swine. That is him. He will send you to sweet, feed the swine. He had nothing good for you. I want to tell someone listening to me today, Satan has no good job for you. He has no good food for you. He is not a good friend. He is not. Can our eyes be open, brethren? Can our eyes be open, the world? You know, when preachers are preaching and it is coming, say, oh, come on. We are all fishes in the water. We can't deny water. You can through the blood of Jesus. Yes, people can say, oh, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. I am, you can't tonight. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And some of us may say, do we, the powers, look at what the Bible says. That we, in Ephesians chapter 6, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Don't think it's some people, somebody you are with is the one. It's Satan. But the Bible says against principalities. He's a principality. He will load himself over you. He will take over your life. He's going to perpetrate punishment on you. He's going to distort you. He's going to take your mind away. He's going to fill the heart with wickedness. Some people pride in wickedness. I've had people say, you know me. You know me. He, they are not the one talking. It's Satan talking through them. You know what I can do. You know when people come boldly, they said, oh, I'm going to play the devil now. How can a human being say this statement? I'm going to play the devil. It means that devil has taken over them. And when they are doing things, they know what they're doing is wrong. But they close their eyes to make sure the other person is destroyed. When they're going on, even into political offices, just for an office of four years, maximum eight years, you destroy lives. For countries in Africa, they kill them. I know a friend of ours, such a very tall, huge man. Because of politics in election, they took him. Tall, huge, taller than apostle, big. And they took him and put him in a very small boot of a car. By the time they got him where they were going, he collapsed and died. In that boot, they brought out a corpse. That's how he lost his life. Just for four years in office. Just for eight years in office. That is even far. What Satan can do? Some people in ministry. What will it profit you? Be, you know, big time, false prophets are there. And you're playing into their hands and allowing Satan to use you to speak false prophecy. And allowing Satan to use you to blaspheme the church. Because the more you do this, the more those who have not come into the kingdom will say, no, I'm not going to come. Is that what they are doing? Because they know it's the works of darkness. So when you open your mouth to blow out prophecies that are coming to hell, Satan will, Satan will deny you one day. 
He will. When you are going to get magic to do miracles, Satan will deny you one day. He will. Actually, he himself will send you to feed the swine in hell. He will do it. When you're doing it or you're going, partying, it doesn't matter, going naked on streets, marking your bodies from head to toe, I want to tell you today, repent. Or Satan will send you to feed the swine. He's wicked. Or are you full of yourself? Or maybe your culture, your intellect or anything, you are not giving room to the gospel. I want to let you know, Jesus save, run away from Satan. He will only send you to the field to feed swine. Nothing else. Are you in your own way? You look at yourself and say, I think I have my right. It's my human right to do to my body what I want to do. Even to live in a perverse way. I want to tell you, please run away from Satan. There's nothing good from him. He just wants to take away the glory of God upon our lives. Whatever, do not listen to him. Are you remaining in unbelief, remaining in unforgiveness, remaining or in pride? Remember, God will resist the proud, but will only give grace to the humble. Then if the Lord himself resists you, what do you think Satan will do? He will make a means mate. He will grind a person and roll the person in, in wavy shape. That's him, brethren. Let's not listen to him. Are you there sitting and saying, well, I do myself and in factions, or oh, you're a Christian and you're playing with your Christian life in lukewarmness, in half and half Christianity. I want to tell you today, run for your life. Run for your life. Satan has got all his matches, his knife, his ammunitions sharpened and he spares nobody. He spares. He cuts off very quickly. He doesn't look to the left or to the right. Are you listening to me today? Walk one the word for the, the things to come. It will surely come. He doesn't want to be in hell by himself. He wants to take as many as he can, especially the Christians that believe. The Christians that believe. He wants you to suboptimize your Christian life. He wants you to, to compromise your Christian life. He wants you to go to churches where they have each ears and all they tell you, God is good. He will do this for you. But they don't talk to you about righteousness. They don't talk to you about holiness. They don't talk to you about forgiveness. They don't talk to you about standing strong. They don't talk to you about the wiles of the enemy so that you can run for their life. They want to keep you there, servicing you in sin, servicing you in false prophecy and false promises and you remain there and go to hell today as you are listening to me get up and says you can't keep me here satan brethren i don't know how to say it but i know the lord is ministering to everyone listening this morning please satan can only take you to the field to feed the swine he had nothing to give you Absolutely nothing. Look at how wicked he is. Let's see verse 16. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. The demons will give you nothing. Absolutely nothing. They are taking instructions from their master, Satan. They are taking instructions. And that instruction is that hunger will come. Even the husk being given to the swine. You know what a husk is? Can you eat a husk? Can our body digest it? Brethren, can you see the worst of things on earth? It's better to go and eat green grass than to ever bother to come and eat a husk. This is what was given to the pig. He even asked for it. And Satan will say no. Brethren, I want to let you know. People out there, please listen. Satan have nothing for you. He will tempt you. He will lead you to that lonely road. And when the lonely road, when you get there, all you will see, as I have said earlier, is a desert place. Nowhere to lay your hand. The sands are very hot. The ground is very stony. The thorns and briars on the way as will, will, can, will only scratch your skin and it will be bleeding. And as you're going, all the demons and all the pythons will be there and they will bring out their tongue. They will open their mouth to swallow you. All the dragons will be there to destroy destroy and to eat you up and to terrorize you this is satan this is satan when you look at the state you are now some people no sleep at all not at all some people demons are chasing them some people their hearts are going satan will 
change your face immediately. He will turn it to the back and bring your back straight to the front. He will make you a Dracula. He is going to make you a, a muskrat. He is going to take out life from you. He is wicked. He is terribly wicked. He can change anyone. Look at what the Bible says in Luke 22, verse 3. And Satan entered into Judas. And when he entered, nothing remained of Judas anymore. And he went and betrayed Elohim, Yeshua Hamashiach, his master, that he saw everything. When Satan goes in, he can ruin anyone at any time. He doesn't respect anybody. Let me tell you, Satan does not respect your money. Satan does not respect your title. Satan does not re respect your denomination or your religion. Satan does not respect who you are. He was created before you. He had been before you came in. So why would you play with such a person? The Bible says we do not wrestle against powers. Don't be deceived. He's got powers. He's got powers. He's got powers. And if you want to do it by your own power, you are, let me tell you very early, you failed absolutely failed because by strength shall no man prevail there is only one power and that power is the power in the name of jesus that power is the power in elohim that power is the name above all name that are the mention of it or satan will surely bow so if you don't have that name how can you face satan powers principalities powers bible called him rulers of darkness of this world think of anything dark and you're thinking about Satan. Have you seen darkness before? There are some of you who are listening. Maybe you're still joking with your life because you've not seen darkness. Brethren, I've seen darkness. I have seen. Ask the Lord today to open your eyes to see a little bit of what hell looks like. When you have a peep into it, for life, you will never play with it. For life, you will ever stand to withstand Satan in this life. It is terrible. It is demonic even here on earth you know there's some place apostle and i entered you know when we were doing evangelism we got into this place and opened the door to go in we were greeted with physical darkness and only to go in we saw light in there but they're yellow lights and come and see where we entered to do evangelism you can never believe this in life that such a place exists in a typical middle of a town center you will never believe it people were dark all their bodies they were busy when they saw us this like they looked and said what are you doing here and when we came and I, I just was bringing out my tractor, Apostle looked at, we never believed that such physical darkness could be happening in such a very busy place. And people were like in bondage. They were doing this. And what was saw in there was terrible. It's terrible. Occultic places. All there. Demonic places. Where men change from physical human being to other things. Where you see all their signs all over the world. Where they make pride, show their signs and what they are doing. And how they go at night and destroy men. That is Satan for you. Are you in such teams? In such group? Are you in such organizations? Today, the Lord is saying, I will redeem you. It is all about Satan. Don't remain there. You are not part of him. You are created in the image of Elohim. God created you in his own image. Satan is just wickedness in high places. The Bible is spiritual wickedness in high places. What did he call him? Rulers of darkness of this world. Rulers of darkness. Brother, look at this word. We fight, no, we fight against principalities powers, rulers of darkness of this world, wickedness in high places, wickedness of all high places, of all high tables, of all high offices, of all high thrones, of all high everything, wickedness in high places. He commands, he rules, people take office just to perpetrate wickedness on their people, wickedness in high places. It doesn't touch them. If people on the ground die, it doesn't touch them. If they starve them for life, it doesn't touch them. If they remain in penury, but they will get all the money to go and build weapons to go and fight, it doesn't touch them. When they come out to sea, it doesn't. Wickedness in high places, high places, high covens, High covens, occultism, terrible ones. Brethren, it is there. Do not get yourself in there. And if you are there and you are listening to me today, the Lord will save you. This is the enemy. This is Satan. This is Satan. In school is 
life there that even in very young children you can't even imagine that a young child would take her fingers and put in another child's hand another child will bully another child and bully them and bully them on this street and it doesn't respect age at all even in primary schools bullying are there secondary school is another thing the enemy is recruiting children telling them you are your own god you can do what you like and i've got this society to allow these children the lord will judge everyone in this society we have money to pay for them we have money to say, to tell them oh before they are uh, before they are 16 parents you look after them but how much is the society looking after them how much are governments looking after them we've exposed these children to terrible things we've exposed these children to all sorts and we are now saying oh can you do this parents to watch your child what is the school teaching these children what are they allowing them to go Please, everyone, this is the enemy. He had entered every system, every government, everywhere they've taken hold. And if you're not part, they will make sure you're put down. Brethren, this is Satan. Even on the street, hard, hard. Some laws are so hard. And it is aimed at the poor people who are ignorant. The rich ones know how to wriggle out of it. Those that made the law knows how to wriggle out of it. But the essence of it is to punish the populace. It has been from beginning thousands and thousands of years brethren can it remain so why not tell yourself i have had this no this wickedness must stop it's all about satan it's all about satan people will go on the street hit people and kill them there and they disappear they won't even turn people will get out with knives and keep stabbing orders on the street and watch them bleed to death that is it that is satan it's not people doing it. It's Satan wrecking havoc in our society. It's Satan wrecking havoc to womankind. It's Satan fighting a warfare against us. But our eyes are not opened. And we're obeying him. Obeying him to steal. Satan will tell you to go and break a bank and you are going. He will fill your eyes and tell you you're a superman. You will disappear. They can't catch you. You'll be caught and you'll be put in prison. For life imprisonment. He had destroyed. He had taken you there. He made you to go. And you didn't see yourself again as a human being. That you will be caught. CCTV will catch you. The police will get you. You wouldn't see that. And you will go to do it. Bread and what Satan will tell you. Go and defraud. And take people's things. You will take it. Satan will tell you, oh, you are now a judge, you are now this, you are now in the parliament, or you are now in the senate, or whatever we call our different countries, you know, seat of power. Now, I want you to make this law. And then you are there, you pursue the case that will put generations into bondage. You pursue it, you tell all lies, you get people to see it, and it goes and it comes into pass. But four, five Six next generations, I will suffer because of just selfishness. You allowed Satan to use you to put things in place that shouldn't be. And such people, when he finishes, maybe two, three days, they will do some things and they're out of office. They will go. But then what they have done had remained. People have put others into perpetual poverty in those days. Lo, those days when people get land, they wouldn't want others to farm. They would go and put up a law. Before you can farm, you must have a tractor. You must have this. You can't do this without a fence and all those things. And they will have all those things because they got the money. They put the fence. They put the tractors. And that law, they'll pursue it until it goes through. And when it goes through, everybody will say, you can't farm unless you get this, you get that, you get that. So only very few people remain to get monopolized. They buy up plants. They are doing it so that the very poor people will come and buy and then eat for all over the years, you have law of these, law of that, law of these, law of that. Who set it up? One man, Satan, took over to perpetrate punishment on the masses. Brethren, this is Satan. He's still fighting against us. He's still fighting against human beings. He's still doing it. He takes over the heart of man to remain in unbelief, to remain in anger, to remain in bitterness, to remain in pride, to remain in covetousness, to be emulatious, traitors, haters of God, covenant breakers. He does all this, all sorts. There is no evil lacking with him. He is the father of all lies. He will do it. It takes him. 
And the Bible says that the night is far spent, brethren. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off. Let's cast away. Let's cast away. I want to thank Heavenly Father for this young man. When he saw what he entered, he didn't bargain for it. Satan didn't show him. He made everything look rosy and he took his journey. And he, so wicked, took him to a far country where mom, dad, relatives are not there. A far country so that he will go there and perish. That's how far he takes anyone. Where are you today? Have you gone so far? There is still the blood of Jesus. And tomorrow we are going to look at the steps, the bold steps this young man took. And you are going to take that bold step and say, enough is enough, Satan. You can't have rule over me. You have really put punishment and perpetrated wickedness on mankind. You've taken away the joy of men. You've taken away the peace of men. You've made men behave. All sorts, brethren. We can't name them all. But look out there covetousness. Look out there, greed. Look out there, avarice. Look out there. You see all these things and people have taken them as if they are numb. Brethren, they are not numb. We are now used to it. And people can now say, oh, you know, in, in this culture, they are filled with jealousy. Oh, you, need, you know, in this culture, lie is nothing. You know, in this culture, oh, stealing is a normal thing. No, brethren. And an enemy had done this. Satan had done this to bring people to destitute. People the Lord has created in own image. This day, as you have heard me, your eyes are opened. You are going to say, no way. Then what shall I do? Stay with us tomorrow morning. Come on on the line and see what we should be doing. He is in trouble. He can never have rule over us anymore. We are going to get away from him. We are going to resist him. We are going to take the bold step. Come on in the morning. Let's all, preachers come, believers come. Don't say I'm born again. I have known it. If you are born again, you are backslidden. Come on again in the morning. If you're born again and your life is toxic, what do you call it? Come on again. And you're compromising and you're lukewarm, come on again. And you're a preacher, you've forgotten the stone from which you have healed and you've gone off to the whale of Belia, Balak, uh, Barak, and you've, uh, ba Barak, Balak, and you've gone, Balaam, sorry, and you've gone away again to do the things which you ought not to. Or you're in ministry, you devil is using you to confuse and to blaspheme the name of the Lord. Come on in the morning, we are going to return back to our father father we thank you we give you praise we honor your name thank you lord for opening our eyes to know who satan is is. Nothing good comes from him and nothing good will ever come from him. Lord Jesus, as all these things, men will not be deceived anymore for he had come to kill, to steal and to destroy. But you have come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Anyone who had wandered off into any far habit, a far attitude, far depravity, Heavenly Father, today, open everyone's eyes to see that famine is already at the door and Satan has nothing to offer, but rather we send everyone to the swine. Anyone who is already feeding the, sh the, 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 the swines with husk and even desiring to eat and they are not given because Satan cannot give. Father, today, bring them to realization. Bring them to say, hang on, enough is enough. I'm not going to beg Satan again. He's not even going to give me. He can only give sickness. He can only give calamity. He can only give woe. He can only give punishment. He can only take out life. Father, open our eyes. As people will listen, oh Lord, they will say, I've never had this. I didn't know this. No, I'm not going to listen to him anymore. They will look into their own life and see their own destitute and see their own spiritual and physical poverty that the enemy has brought them and saw how low and how based he had put them. And today, Father, as they listen, they can't wait. Even before morning, they are going to read the book of Luke chapter 15 and says, I'm not going to wait for you. I'm going to read it myself to know what next I'm going to do in verse 17. Father, thank you for you have heard and answered our prayers. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.